Yeah? I'm feeding beat strong. The devil's son in law. Rudy Ray Moore is Petey Weedstraw, starring Leroy and Skillet, Jimmy Funky Tramp Lynch, and Wild Man Steve. Just remember one thing. Tell him you got to. Proposition to offer you, Petey. Are you willing to listen? But what do you want from me now? A son. You got to be sick. Don't give me that supernatural shit. That dolomite man, Rudy Ray Moore, is back funnier than ever in the new movie, Petey Wheatstraw. Start praying, pal. Yes, tell your boss I'm still alive and I'm mad as a honey than a bumblebee eyes. Always like women with big No business, born rat suit, son of a bitch. Rated R. Welcome to They Call This a Movie, testing the strength of friendships one terrible movie at a time. Subscribe to the podcast and iTunes or other podcast services by searching They Call This Movie and find us on Twitter and Instagram at TamPod. That's T-C-T-A-M pod. Welcome back to They Call This Movie. This is Anthony Del Vecchio. With me as always is Dan Aquino and Mark Meyer. Say hello, gentlemen. Hey, friends. Hello, everyone. Um, I don't know how much conversation this will spur, but the only thing that really happened this week that was uh, of interest to me that maybe you guys would have uh, uh, some opinion on was... Uh, so, you know, I talk about her a lot on here, but, you know, my niece is starting her senior year of high school um, this week. And they did a tradition today that they called sunrise with seniors, with the seniors. And they all like went to the football field when the sun was rising. And I don't know if it's maybe where I lived or because I went to a Catholic school, um, but I don't remember them having anything like special like this. I feel this is like a whole like, since social media came along fat did i know you guys both went to public was it anything like did you have any traditions like that or like not even that but you know what i'm what i'm saying um, i do fucking shit yeah. <laughs> uh no no yeah. I, well, I guess i guess get picked on <laughs> yeah. mark, I mean, mark let me set the stage for you for yeah. my senior year of high school which yeah. if you don't know was 2003 when i yeah. graduated my school said we weren't going to go on a senior trip, which would have been to Disney World, because of 9-11. Oh, that was a little late for that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's, I, that school was so happy after 9-11 happened. <laughs> they were oh, like, yeah. just lying in their pockets with that money they would have spent. We're going to say Our tourists. Our Catholic youth organization also did the same thing, but not all the way into 2003, but like everything from 01 for like the next year and a half was canceled. And, but we still had to pay the money um, for the group. But uh, yeah, it was just, I don't know. I, 
obviously it's it's probably very much a generational thing, but also it must be like they must have been doing it a while or something special because the fact of getting seventeen to eighteen year old boys and girls up at like four thirty in the morning, five o'clock or whenever they had to be there, um, is kind of remarkable from <laughs> from being teenagers and seeing uh two teenagers. I think um, I think if you give them something that they're very excited for, they'll have no problem waking up early. That's that's what I mean. Like, yeah, it's it's like true. But it was just weird. It came across my Instagram um, because obviously, you know, they photograph and um, share every single photograph from their friends on there, um, as you're probably supposed to do with social media. Right. But yeah, it, was, it just made me think I was like, senior year was just like, hey, when do we get the ring so that I can turn it around and hit the freshman on the back of the head? Jesus, that was the thing I was looking Whoa. forward to. <laughs> your your school tradition was battery. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of those like, um, you know, it, uh, I'm not I'm not going to excuse it. It's like one of those like it should have ended with us um, because I'd we say. got you know we got we got the seniors did that to us. So by the time we became seniors, we should have been like, you know what, let's not do this anymore. I think but that's no. what the Blake Lively movie is about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hitting a uh, freshman high schoolers in the back of the head with rings. Yeah. I can, I can see Mark when he gets his ring. I'm going to punch this guy in the back of the head. <laughs> no, 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 Dan. It's much more sly. You take the ring, you spin it so that it's on the inside of your hand, and you just smack him in the back of the head. Okay. Mark, <laughs> did you do this? Maybe. Honestly. Honestly. Oh, my did. <laughs> Mark, so. I'm scared of Mark now. Now we know why babies cry when they're being held by Mark, because he used to be a piece of shit. <laughs> do, do you want to know the magical destination where my school went for our senior class trip? Cape uh, May, New Jersey. No, that that's that would have been lovely. Well, we we went to the rack. Nice. Which is just Rutgers training facility. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like a pool there. That was there. That was like the, trip. that was what the the selling point was. Hey, there's a pool. Who doesn't want to just go into the pool for their <laughs> senior year? Yeah, that's like a quarter of a tank of gas for you too. But hey, it was great. I was right around the corner. <laughs> well, no, we actually had to take a bus to get there. They wouldn't let our parents <laughs> drop us off for whatever reason, or we couldn't drive there if we wanted to. Very strange. Yeah, uh, tradition. But I I was not assaulted. I will say that. So <laughs> yeah. I, I got one up on Mark here. Yes, I will. Yeah. I will never. I will always freely admit, you know, when asked as as Sam did. Um, but I have grown, and I am no longer a piece of shit. You used yeah. to be. I used, used to be a piece, be a piece of shit. Of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord! I didn't know you were such an asshole there, Mark, when you were in in high school. Uh, it's me. more. It was more trying to impress people that I probably shouldn't have been impressing. Uh, yeah. You know, at an all boys yeah. school. Sure, Before, Mark. You know, hey, look, I'm just as mean and and badass as you like me. Wow. Mission accomplished, Mark. Yeah, I don't talk to any of those people. So yeah, it was well worth it. See, this is these are the stories. You assaulting people should be the stories that come on this podcast and not you just like getting fully erect when you drive more than fifty <laughs> miles. Keep yeah. these stories. I, I should just I should just keep this as like my therapy sessions. I, this it's sounds better. like it yeah, you're I feel like you're just trying to Works skip out on your that. betterhealth.com uh, <laughs> subscription for a, a oh. week. Oh, that's scam. But that's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, besides Mark coming to terms with the uh, the delinquent that he was uh, 20 some odd years ago, yep. uh, we watched a movie this week. And this week was my pick. And I picked the movie because we haven't done a Rudy Ray Moore movie in quite a while. Pre-pandemic. Mm. Oh, we wow. did Dolomite, I yeah. believe. Yes. And... Right around the pandemic, maybe. Probably in conjunction with Dolomite is my name. So that might have been 2019. Um, but we watched Petey Wheatstraw. Full name of this film is Petey Wheatstraw colon The Devil's Son-in-Law. And this might be the best movie we've ever covered. <laughs> <laughs> At least in my opinion. But I want to know where you guys are coming from. So Dan, where are you coming from with Petey Wheatstraw? Petey Wheatstraw. First time uh, watching this movie. Obviously, I know about Rudy Ray Moore. Uh, I was not. I didn't know what to expect with this movie, and I'm I'm glad that I kind of went in 
not knowing what was going to happen because this is this movie is chaos to put it lightly. Uh, I but I I liked it. There's definitely a there's something endearing about a Rudy Ray Moore film because it's it's a man who clearly is just promoting himself and his strong suit, right? Like he he's a comedian, a stand-up comedian, an actor, and in both movies that we've watched of his, Dolomite and uh, P.D. Wheatstraw, he's done some sort of comedy routine. So it, it, these movies are just a way for him to showcase his talents. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's got his love for kung fu move, uh, movies in his movies. Right? There's, there's no shortage of kung fu in this movie. You mean, you mean the oriental arts? Right. Yes. It's, it, but yeah, it's it's endearing because it's it's clearly a guy who is betting on himself, uh, is having a lot of fun making these movies, has zero clue how to make a good movie, <laughs> but it, it's not stopping him. So there's that do it yourself uh, feel the yeah. vibes in these he's movies. The, right. He's the Neil Breen of exploitation. Well, he's he's far superior to Neil Breen. Uh, because Neil Breen thinks of himself as an auteur, <laughs> where I'm, I'm fairly certain Rudy Ray Moore was just, if no one's going to bet on me, I'm going to do it myself, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it the way that I want to do it. Uh, and he's, he's kind of, he's in on the, the joke, as it were, right? Because in this movie, he, there's a ton of just like overreaction shots. There's a ton of. Just like, oh, every woman wants me. Right? <laughs> Any woman that comes into frame just wants to bang Petey Wheatstraw. <laughs> uh, and it, it's great. Like it, this movie was this movie was essentially a hundred minutes of Rudy Ray Moore just roasting the shit out of people. <laughs> yep. And I'm here for it. And I loved it. <laughs> All right, Mark, where are you coming from with Petey Wheatstraw? Yeah, so um outside of what we've watched here, I, I've never really seen any other any one of his other movies, but I feel like I would know one immediately, even before he came up on screen, um, because it's very much had the same feel as Dolomite. Um, yeah, the the one thing, uh, question probably more for you, Ant, before I go uh, deeper into this. Would you say that this specific character and type of movie was probably the uh, inspiration for Pootie Tang? Oh, 100%. There is a direct, okay. direct okay. line. Okay. Just, yeah, 100%. Because there was plenty of things in this movie where I was like, I think that's like... I think they literally took that scene into Pootie Tang. Um, the, the the early years scenes felt so Pootie Tang to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was one of the ones in my head. But yeah, so yeah, the, these movies are great because they 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 pass the test that um, I have, where I never look at my phone or start surfing the internet during the movie because I don't know what's going to happen next, and I need to make sure I'm paying attention to it. Um, my favorite part about um, uh, this movie is, is, in particular, was that um, every every character um, felt like they were coming up with their lines on the spot. I sure. don't know exactly how much of a script was written. Um, I just, and I also want to incorporate into my life the uh, "shut the hell up, I'm thinking," uh, <laughs> or "I'm trying to think," or whatever um, the the one guy says like repeatedly, uh, which is a pretty good line. Um, but I think I think the best parts of these movies are uh, Rudy Ray Moore just when he just inhabits the 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 character and sort of does some fourth wall breaking and um it just it just very much it, it's it's the thing with a lot of movies where you can just feel the fun um, that they were having on set um, coming out in the movie um, and he finds a way to even when doing a slightly gratuitous uh, sex scene to make it shot real fun. Um, okay. I, you know, talking about the bachelor party um, scene at the end um, and just using the paintings in the background and then doing the, the cuts and all that were great. Um, I, I love the shock in, in the middle of where, you know, you don't really, think uh there's going to be death in these movies and then all of a sudden that little boy dies and then there's a drive-by of the well not essentially drive-by they just stood in the street um of the funeral um where they just blew everyone away that was heavy. Um, yeah <laughs> i was not expecting that scene <laughs> yeah it, it it was just like oh oh this this is slightly against the vibe and then they instantly changed that when 
uh, the devil shows up. Can um, I, or, can I yeah. say something real quick, Mark? Yeah. When what's his name? Teddy or or Lenny, the the boy who gets killed. Yeah. When he dies, that death scene is better than some like big budget movie death yeah. scenes. Yeah. Are, that pretty good. I, I, was, I was like, holy shit, this feels pretty heavy. It's sad to say, but they some of the people that wrote and shot this movie may have had experience with scenes like that yeah. in in real Indeed. life growing up in terms of people dying while sure. they were around. Um, yeah, you never know. Yeah. And because that that's where that's why that felt like it came from, because it was, as you say, much more realistic than you see in a lot of movies, um, mm-hmm. even even though it was still a little, you know, movie magic over the top. I don't think anybody gets to have last words um, like the boy has, or at least I don't think that happens. Um, but, you know, just the just the emotion and all that was very, very well done. Um, yeah, overall, I uh, I like the reveal of the daughter at the end. I thought it was going to be the opposite. Um, that they were going to reveal the daughter and she was going to be gorgeous. Um, uh, and Mark, it was, yeah, you got to remember, she's so ugly that she could scare a hungry bulldog off the back of a meat <laughs> truck. <laughs> <laughs> you don't forget. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was just going to be like a bad photo taken, and part. then when she reveals herself, it was, uh, it was yeah. going, you know, going to be the like that was going to be the 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 kicker at the end. Um, and one then of the, one of the many good burns. There's, like, there, there's a lot of really good ones. The uh, the crowd work. I think you were mentioning this, Dan, in the in the in the yeah. opening. Um, yeah. uh, thing is talking. really good. Yeah, I'll take that from the woman's breast and slap you across the face with it. You can't talk to my woman like that. Shut <laughs> your old ass up. <laughs> okay. And does, then the does this guy catching strays. It's great. <laughs> yeah. And then my my other final favorite. Uh, moment or, or thought on this movie is that the one thing that makes it really fun is that uh Rudy Moore has a lot of fun with the inanimate object of the cane. Yes. Whenever he has it in his hands. <laughs> yes. And that is what makes the whole movie. If he just stood there and was very stoic or whatever with it, um, or just made facial reactions was great, but the sort of bobbing the head while he's holding it um and, and doing all that stuff. Uh, made it a lot more goofier than it could have been, but also made made those parts of the movie. Um, and yeah, and him, yeah, it, it was just that once they introduced the uh, uh, the cane part, and then um, I was like, okay, this movie's this movie's gonna get. Yeah, uh, this movie is so much fun. You know, this movie is solidified. You know that that one thing of like, if you could select five people for dinner party living or dead i think this movie solidified that rudy ray moore would be one of my picks sure <laughs> because i this guy is such a character and it comes through so much in this movie and dolomite i would just love to, <laughs> to hear him talk and to ask him questions because this movie like as fun as this is and is funny and is obviously it's shot on a very low budget there are moments where this is very cinematic like you mentioned the death scene of of larry being far better like staged than it needs to be for this movie mm-hmm. and then the 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 scene in the, fu- the the at the funeral where like everyone is now gunned down and every- Everybody is is frozen in place while Lucifer walks into the scene and what and, you know, watches. And it's just, you know, it's just done by everybody standing perfectly still. But it, it's so well done that I was like, man, that's, you know, that's actually props to them. That feels like a movie. Yeah. And um, but yeah, I Rudy Ray Moore is so much fun in this. There's like scenes also where like that are super like they have the. Uh, superpose the shots of of old lucifer mm-hmm. before he makes his transformation over some scenes i don't remember particularly exactly which ones but that was like oh the, the the scenes from in hell are very like interestingly shot with the red filter yeah yeah this yeah this is a wild movie the plot is so silly like all of this is because two club promoters uh made a deal that they couldn't possibly pay back. <laughs> yeah. It is so, in danger because of, uh, of PD wheat straw coming to town <laughs> <laughs> because PD wheat straw is in town. They can't possibly pay this loan back. 
<laughs> they go to great lengths to to stop him from performing. It's wonderfully stupid, but goddamn, uh, this is this was some of was the most fun I've had in watching one of these movies in a, in quite a while. I yeah, I agree. I I think it's an interesting interesting premise that, like you said, Ant, there's the scene where the churchgoers, the mourners, get gunned down right outside the church. And in order to save their lives, Petey Wheatstraw has to make a deal with the devil to make sure none of that happened. And now it's it's a very roundabout way of Petey trying to out-trick or outsmart the devil, right? Yep. After yeah. he just viciously burns the devil's <laughs> daughter to the devil's face. Yeah. Like, that's how badass Petey Wheat, like, or just Rudy Ray Moore is, right? Yeah. He's like, if I were face to face with the devil, I would just lay into him. I, I do not care. Like, what does he say? Um, he's basically like he begs the devil to kill him instead of marrying <laughs> his daughter. <laughs> like, oh. She's so ugly. She could like punch out the sun or something like that. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like wow. That's really funny that he he's writing in these uh these lines of dialogue where it's just like yeah i'm just gonna like go in on the the devil's daughter and the devil just kind of takes it yeah he's like yeah yep, listen, yeah yeah listen they can't all be winners <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i i thought it, to and to your point how there are parts of this movie where it is shot better than one would expect but it's also butted up against scenes where people dress up in dracula capes <laughs> and, yeah. and attack Petey Wheatstraw. So you're getting, you're running the gamut with yeah. this movie. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite scenes is the scene where he finds the, the dynamite in the trash oh, can. Yes. With the girl singing <laughs> the, the girl entire singing. time. <laughs> and then he takes it outside and he throws it and blows up the watermelon truck. Yeah. <laughs> in slow motion, no less. <laughs> yeah. My favorite part was the uh, transition of shot between you know um him yelling at the guy in the truck to the shot to make sure you see the truck explode yeah <laughs> like it's, it's a very bad cut you know edit there well did, because... did you notice the timer on the dynamite oh, yeah that was great paper paper <laughs> paper cut out the speaking this of is... transition the transitions i love the end when he picks up the devil Yes. <laughs> and, and throws him off the roof. And the, all of a sudden, the, the devil's on fire for no reason. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all it takes to beat the devil. <laughs> but, but as Mark was saying, how he uses the cane in that scene yeah. to like incapacitate the devil is great. Because he's not just like standing there pointing the cane. I'm, I'm assuming it's a pimp cane. Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. Which is great. But he's he's like moving it around and kind there's of like, like weight to it. Yeah. Yes. It's almost like a priest holding up the cross to like in an exorcism, right? How they're, mm-hmm. they're not just holding it. They're like shoving it in the demon's face in a way, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. There, there's a weight to it. That's perfectly put. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, but I think we could probably go for a, at, at length of the silliness in this movie. Yeah, I I was surprised how much of a straight comedy this was. I wasn't expecting that. Like Dolomite is, is comedic, but like this is like uh, this. Uh, I was thinking it was like it's it's impressive that Pooty Tang exists because this movie already exists. Where it's like, how do you parody something that is already a parody? Sort of sure because there is a lot of stuff that I was like, oh, that's Pooty Tang. It's like Pooty Tang. It took that from you know like there's a, a one to one there's a one to one between the cane and and Pooty Tang's belt you know yes that's a good point yeah so uh, but yeah this was a lot of fun yeah I I I liked the again like one of my favorite running gags in this movie is how his one female friend Nell mm-hmm. keeps getting cock blocked <laughs> with the You're phone right? yeah with the phone. And then when the demons break in, yeah. <laughs> right? It's, like, it's it's so absurd that, it, and again, it's it's a very one-sided relationship where Petey really doesn't want anything to do with Nell, but Nell yeah. wants to jump his bones so yeah, bad. Yeah, he's like, he like uh, reluctantly is like agrees to have sex with her. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. Maybe it won't be as bad as I think it will be. 
Thank you. Yes, that's that's a great line. Maybe it won't be as <laughs> insulting her to her face. <laughs> and she's not ugly at, at all. Not at all. Yeah, she. It, the the scene opens up with her in negligee. Yeah, and she looks great. And and P, but that, again, Petey is so used to just having women fawn over him. It's like I have my pick. Yeah, but and, and, he he'll indulge in some demon chicks. Oh, he. So, question for you guys: mm-hmm. Are we led to believe in that scene that he bangs the devil women to death? At least to unconsciousness. Okay. Yeah. Or like in like a stupor. Yeah, he was so virile, he wore them out. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because and, they're all like glassy eyed. And, and from what I could tell from the 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 cutaways and scenes, it might have not even been banging. He might have just oraled them to death. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, the, he's he's switching positions randomly. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's in my notes. I, I had did he just bang the she devils to death? <laughs> yeah. So, P.D. Wheatstraw from 1977, is directed by Cliff Rokemore, who directed Human Tornado, another Rudy Ray Moore movie, as well as Rude, which was a Rudy Ray Moore stand up film. Stars Rudy Ray Moore, Jimmy Lynch, Leroy Daniels, Ernest Mayhand, Ebony Wright. G. Tito Shaw, Marvin Jones, and Cy Richardson. IMDb score of 6.0. Rotten Tomato score of 53% audience. Budget $750,000 and no box office numbers. Do you guys want to get into this plot? <laughs> I would like nothing more than to do that. I would love to hear you explain this plot. <laughs> right. Dan, what you got for us? All right, guys, real quick. Uh, we have a couple friends of the podcast that we would love for you to go follow. Check them out and support. Uh, the first being the top 10 with Tia. We've had Tia on this podcast plenty of times. She's uh, very funny. And if you enjoy top 10 lists, this is the podcast for you. So go over to geekvibesnation.com, search the top 10 with Tia. It'll pop right up. And last but not least, Mark Myers, our very own Mark Myers, has a video game podcast called The Game Vault Podcast. It is a biweekly podcast where you can get it on any platform of your choice where he talks about video game news, video games that he's playing, and games that you should be on the lookout for, something you may have missed. He's got you covered. He also streams on Twitch at Game Vault Pod, and they are on all socials at Game Vault Pod. So please go uh, rate and review, follow on Twitch, tell him you said hi. It's a lot of fun. Okay, great. And we're going to take a quick break, and you guys are going to listen to messages from friends of the podcast. So we'll be right back. And welcome back. Now it's time to get into the plot for Petey Wheatstraw. We open on some fire and some tribal drums. We pull out to reveal Petey Wheatstraw, the devil's son-in-law, doing some spoken word poetry about all the things he's done, including put the 4th of July in June and making Leap Year jump over the moon. We then flash to Petey Wheatstraw's birth, which happened during a Miami storm. We then see his mother give birth, and she gives birth to a grown child, who then attacks the doctor for slapping his behind then tries to fight his dad for having sex with his mom while she was pregnant. Yeah, that, that was great. You're the one who's been keeping me up for all for weeks. <laughs> and his mom just decides for some reason to name him Petey Wheatstraw. What, so th- this is what we were talking about at the, the top of the episode, where you could see he's having a lot of fun when he makes these movies. Mm-hmm. Because this scene makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. It doesn't tie into anything. Yeah. Right. It's just he thought this would be funny. And it was. Yep. Uh, We don't need to see his birth. And uh, but we're better for it, I suppose. And yeah, he doesn't need to be a grown child. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) That was completely unnecessary, but funny. We then flash forward to Petey getting beat up by local neighborhood kids. An old man by the name of Bound 2 picks him up and dusts him off and tells him that he'll teach Petey the way of martial arts so he could exact revenge kids that beat him up. So we get a montage of his training as the rest of the Reddit's crawl roll. And Bantu is done training Petey. And Petey says that he wants to become a comedian to help the world. And we then see flash forward to Petey Wheatstraw as an adult doing stand up, saying he loves a big ass and telling her man, the woman's man to shut up. Who's going to make another woman beat the shit out of him with her titty. <laughs> he uh-huh. finishes his set and then leaves the stage with a mob of women chasing after him, including a woman who thinks she's Petey's main woman by the name of Sheila. We never see Sheila again. Yeah, no. Oh, you're right. Nor do we need that. 
We never do. Yeah, we don't need to. Some investor, Mr. White, writes a check to club owners Skillet and Leroy in the hopes they will use it to advertise and fill the club while other talent is out on the road, thereby making him a small profit. Mr. White says they better come through under vague threats of violence. And at that moment, Petey lands in L.A. and goes on a radio show to advertise an appearance at a competing club on the night after Leroy and Skillet open their club. Yeah, Skillet, they get their, hey, they get their yeah. donation from Mr. White. Yep. All right. Skillet hears the radio program and runs to tell Leroy that they can't possibly make good on their deal with Mr. White with Petey in town. So Leroy tells Skillet to call Petey to see if he'll postpone. If he won't, they have other ways. Petey meets with a guy, Steve, at the club that he owns, and they do some planning. But when Petey leaves the club, he catches a few punk kids stealing everything from a tire to the backseat out of his car. (laughs) The backseat was my favorite part. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's so strange. What are you going to do with a backseat? The comical chase ensues until the guys fail to climb a fence, so Petey catches up with them and kicks their asses, and he forces them to put everything back on his car. A couple of guys go around putting up posters, which catches the eye of some guys that work for Leroy and Skillet. So they bring the posters back to show Leroy and Skillet, and they're advertising Petey's appearance at Steve's club. They decide to call the woman they assume Petey is staying with, Nell, and they interrupt what seems to be very reluctant sex, (laughs) and they're and they try to convince Petey to cancel his appearance at Steve's club, but Petey tells them no because they owe him money, and he'd be damned if he'd cancel an appearance anyway. Is this where he says, I'm gonna get them silly sons of bitches? <laughs> I think so. Uh, so he tells Nell to call his boys and tell him, them to meet with Petey, the guy that works with Skillet and Leroy, some tough guy with a scar on his face, calls in to tell Leroy Petey's guy is still putting up posters. So Leroy tells him to rough him up a little bit. Find the guy sitting outside his mom's house with his little brother, talking about how the brother's been skipping school. The guys show up and they try to rough up the guy, Ted. Ted holds his own with some kung fu. Surprise kung fu. Yep. Always Surprise good. karate. It's always great. There's yeah. a lot of that in this movie. Yep. Then the guy with a scar takes out a gun. So the little brother, Larry, does some karate of his own and kicks the guy's arm. The gun goes off and hits Larry, the little brother. And Larry dies. There's a funeral. Was there carrying out the camp? Good. I, I, before that, I think I think two ambulances pull up. At yes. The, yes. The, the one that just looks like a minivan or what, like a VW bus or whatever, and then I think an actual ambulance. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's again this scene. It, it's it's pretty rough because it's like you, you expect there to be some. You you don't expect this to happen first of all in this type of movie, but like the mom is crying. Um, yeah. The, the brother it keeps like oh they shot my brother they shot my brother and like his what his final line is he like pleading almost to not die like I won't skip school no more so it's like he's bargaining mm-hmm. right like oh if I live I I promise I won't skip school like, like this is something you would have seen it was like something like do the right thing you know like, yeah. boys like, in the hood boys in the hood yeah damn man they, I I was not expecting that and then the next scene. Ups it. <laughs> yeah. And there's a funeral, but as they're carrying out the casket from the church, a bunch of guys show up and machine gun the whole funeral procession, killing everyone, including Petey Wheatstraw. And time freezes, and the devil shows up and wakes up Petey and brings him to hell. And the devil shows Petey a vision of the present and shows that Leroy and Skillet were the ones behind the massacre. So the devil makes a deal with him. He'll give him his life back to seek revenge. And in return, he has to marry his daughter and father a son. Petey isn't sure about it, especially after he gets to see a picture of the daughter. But then he remembers some wise words from Von Tu and agrees. So the devil reverses the actions that happened to the church, bringing everyone back to life. And they head back to the club. And Petey explains that he made a deal with the devil in order to get revenge on Skillet and Leroy. So my question for that scene is, it mm-hmm. seems as if some of the people are aware that they were killed. Yes, everybody knows they were killed. And the people that killed them know that that happened. But he just undoes the actions. He doesn't reverse time. He just undoes the actions. That's Wait. an interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say. And it, maybe I don't correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like the people that shot up the funeral only are surprised to see that Petey's still alive. Yes. And not anybody else they shot. Yeah. I don't necessarily know if it's just, oh, I don't remember. It was just like they were there to kill Petey. So they didn't really like take stock in who else. who else they killed. Yeah, um, that makes sense. lateral okay. damage, I guess. Yeah, but I I think that's an interesting concept because usually in a movie where something 
a deal is made with a, a deity of some sort, it's usually to reverse what happened and everyone is unaware. Mm-hmm. But here, everyone is apparently, I, everyone is aware that they were murdered. <laughs> yep. That's got to weigh heavily on some people, I'd imagine. <laughs> like, uh, they, seem I... to go right about, they seem to go about their business like nothing happened. Only, only the one friend is like, what just happened? And, and Petey just shrugs it off. Like, I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you were just gunned down in in cold blood it's fine no time to explain <laughs> no time to explain ted says that he won't rest until he gets revenge on the scarface dude so they show up at the club and ted starts a fight with a bunch of leroy and skillets dudes including the scarface dude and pd shows up and scares everyone off as they think that pd is dead he grabs scarface and holds him up against the wall and tells scarface to tell his bosses that he's back and scarface pisses and shits himself in the process Scarface goes back to Leroy and Skillet, tries to convince them that he did kill Petey, but Petey is back from the grave. They kick him out because he smells like shit and then decide that they should send some guys over to Nell's to kill Petey. Petey and Nell are getting intimate again when she gets another call, this time from the devil, telling Petey he sent him his special cane that has special powers to help protect him. Now, the goon, go ahead. sorry to interrupt, but we find out, spoiler alert, that the cane is so powerful that it could, with, like, it could withhold the devil. Mm-hmm. Why would the devil... Like the, the devil is playing himself here. Yes. Right? So he, he's giving... He knows that he's, his offer to Petey is a weak one because his, his daughter is ugly as sin. So it, it's almost as if he's giving Petey the upper hand on purpose. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's a very strange move by the devil. Yes. It comes back to biting him in the ass. It does. It's what's the saying? I I didn't think the jaguars would eat my face. <laughs> leopards. The leopards. leopards. Yeah. Yeah. The leopards eating faces party. Yes. So the, um, the, this is essentially what the devil does. I didn't think that yeah, they would eat my face. W- would you say Lucifer screwed Lucifer? Yes, he certainly did. <laughs> so Petey and uh, there gets another call. Um, then the goons show up and start fighting Petey and then just trashing the place. Eventually, Petey uses Kung Fu and fights off a whole bunch of guys. Then Devil calls back and reiterates how important the cane is. So Petey's bu- Petey calls his buddy mid- mid-coitus and tells him to meet him down in the graveyard. There they find a dead guy that's been dug up talking about how he's cold. And then the- and then they get the Devil's cane. I don't really understand what happened in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a jumbled mess. <laughs> yeah. The- oh, well, I guess the homeless guy falls into the grave and then his buddy thinks that he's a zombie or something oh yeah there's a pretty funny line in that too i think i can't remember it but oh like the 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 guy is like help me and pd says let's bury this fool (laughs) (laughs) just apropos of nothing really people uh, pd's just sassing everybody yeah even yeah even drunken hobos are are, are getting it (laughs) no one is safe from pd wheat (laughs) straw Back at Leroy and Skillets, Mr. White shows up with some other guys, reminding the two of them that the deal they had, the visit puts the fear of God in the two, so they decide to step up the efforts to get rid of Petey once and for all. We then cut back to Steve's den, where Petey is auditioning acts for his show, when the devil's cane starts acting like a divining rod and ushers Petey into the bathroom, where he finds a bomb in the trash. He grabs it, then plays hot potato with it with a few other people, then brings it outside, where he throws it and blows up a bunch of watermelons in the back of a pickup truck. Afterwards, Petey decides that he's going to go to Skillet and Leroy's opening night, even the score. Now, opening night, Leroy and Skillet show Mr. White, his wife, and her sister to their seats in the front row. Then the show begins with Petey and the crowd watching. Leroy and Skillet try to do their opening bit, but Petey uses the devil's cane to make them say derogatory things about Mr. White and his wife. And they leave the stage to bring on the first act, which is a woman singer. Then Petey uses the cane to make her voice choke up and her wig fly off. Then starts to storm inside a, in the inside the club and starts breaking all the glass crowd tries to leave but the door is locked and scarface who's on the outside can't find his key then ted pulls scarface into the alley and starts beating the shit out of him eventually the doors open and the crowd leaves and leroy and skillet are ushered away by mr white and some very violent looking men then pd finds ted in the alley as scarface stabs himself in the stomach to rob ted of the satisfaction of killing him that's a bold move yeah <laughs> Meanwhile, the devil, the devil and his daughter watch on their crystal as the devil's daughter is excited at the prospect of marrying Petey because he's such a man. He's such a stud. <laughs> Again, everyone wants Petey. <laughs> it, it's, I, it, it's admirable because like, 
this is done throughout uh throughout history in uh in pop culture right it's like jerry seinfeld mm-hmm. right every woman wants to date jerry seinfeld yeah so why yeah why not do that adam sandler is another one yeah. adam sandler oh he's married to tens in every oh, single yeah. movie selma hayek right like, Kate selma hayek. Kate Beckinsale, yeah like, come on <laughs> could only suspend disbelief so far <laughs> Later, at some point, Petey decides to use the cane to help a woman in a domestic dispute by turning her two-timing man into a dog. Devil shows up at the club looking for Petey, but Nell tells him he's not there, so Devil gives her his card and says he needs to see Petey immediately. We then get a montage of Petey using the cane to make things better in the neighborhood for the people he walks by, stopping a car from hitting a kid, then proceeds to aggressively comb the hair of a couple of kids. Yeah, and I feel like that was not that kid true. Was- was not acting at all. No, he was petrified of, <laughs> yes. of Rudy Ray Moore. Yes. This poor kid. Just bawling his eyes out. And and they kept filming it yeah. as he walks off this like <laughs> off uh, off scene. Just bawling his eyes out. I I'm like I don't know what he was thinking there. Uh, he makes a woman thinner, fixes the guy's car. Then he goes to the club and Nell gives him the message the devil dropped him by. And he goes to the dressing room to find the devil hiding behind a rack of clothes. Devil tells Petey that the kid was supposed to get hit by the car and he needs to be more discerning with how he uses the cane. Don't don't interfere in his things. Mm-hmm. Machinations. Whatever. Machinations, that's the word. He mentions that the wedding is scheduled for the next day. The devil wants the cane back, but Petey says that he needs it for one more day. And the devil leaves demanding he mar- that Petey marry his daughter already. And get her off his back, essentially. After the devil leaves, Petey calls his buddy Jimmy over to try and figure out a way to get out of marrying the devil's daughter. They brainstorm, but then Petey calls and asks the devil for some time to do some meditation with his father before the wedding. And the devil re- reluctantly agrees. This is where the movie gets absolutely insane. Yeah. <laughs> this whole plot is just so fucking funny. I, at this point in the movie, I had to step away for a little bit to take care of the baby. Mm-hmm. And I came back and and Jen was watching it. So I asked her, what what did I miss? And she said, so much. <laughs> <laughs> so Petey's plan is for Jimmy to make a mask that looks just like him, find themselves a wino and get him nice and drunk, put the mask on him to trick the devil, and they'll skip town before he realizes. So they hit the street to find themselves a wino and find one, drug him, toss him in the trunk. Jimmy fixes up a mask they put on the passed out drug, and it looks like Rudy Ray Moore slash P.D. Weedstra. So do you guys remember at the beginning of this movie where a young P.D. Weedstra is training with <laughs> his mentor and the mentor is basically telling him like, oh, do good. Mm-hmm. What happened there? <laughs> uh, well, I think selective hearing. Maybe. <laughs> It's just the like, time and place for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is not doing good. No. Jimmy tells Petey he's better off marrying the devil's daughter and then just getting a divorce in hell. But Petey says with the cane, he's just powerful as the devil. The devil shows up at the club after an afternoon jog. Comes by to say he wants to give Petey a pre-wedding present. So they jog over to an abandoned mine, but when they go inside, it's a swanky hotel room that the devil has set up Petey's bachelor party with a whole bunch of half-naked demon women. So there's a montage of Petey having an orgy with the demon woman, and he winds up wearing them all out. And he gets to the club right before... Go ahead. He's a stud. Yep. Even the the women in hell can't handle him. Nope. It's another Pootie Tang sort of one-to-one. Yep. Uh, I don't. Does he have an orgy in Pootie Tang? Or I'm talking just, about just I'm just talking about the women just being all over him. Oh, yes. He gets to the club right before the devil sends his guys to pick him up, but he hides and the demons pick up the drunk with the mask on and puts him in the car. The car doesn't even get down the street before the drunk wakes up, pulls off the mask and runs out of the car, screaming at the sight of the two demons in the front. That, that so man we, is never going to drink again. <laughs> <laughs> the devil figures out that they've been had, so he starts shaking the shit out of Nell's apartment where Petey is taking a nap. But he wakes up and uses the cane to stop the shaking. Angry, the devil sends his demon goons to get the cane back for Petey. So they bombard the club and wind up trying to attack Petey and his friends. But he uses the cane and he banishes them from the club. And Petey's next plan is just to skip town with his friends. So they start packing. 
but the devil sends his most trusted disciples to get PD and bring him to hell to answer for her answer for his backstabbing. I, I know we've talked about this. We, we touched on it a little bit at the beginning, but I, I do like how the devil changes throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. I, his transition from just like a, a regular looking guy to like very haggard and grisly and very off putting. It's it, it's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, like, like he's, he's slowly becoming more and more agitated with Petey, so he's changing his appearance. It seems. Yeah, or I wonder if it's the fact that he doesn't have the cane. Oh, do you think that's what was? It, it was like kind of keeping his visage. Yeah, they never really explain why he is kind of not decomposing, but he is getting he is looking more a, a lot older as as the movie goes on. They yeah, really explain it. Yeah, we don't really know what the cane is. It's just a it's I, I guess a totem of the devil's power. Yeah, but that's that could be it. Mm-hmm. They fight and Petey once again uses the cane to keep them away enough to escape. They try to run, but the demons wind up kidnapping Nell from the alley. The demons bring Nell up to the rooftop, and the devil shows up and threatens to throw Nell off unless he brings the cane to him. Petey tells his friends to bring the car around and goes up to the roof to meet with the devil. The devil, now all old-looking, demands that Petey marry his daughter, but he lets Nell go. The devil then sixes demons on Petey, who then start fighting, trying to fight them off with the cane as Nell makes it down to the car with Petey's friends. Nell convinces Jimmy to drive her home to get more of her things. Meanwhile, Petey starts using the cane's powers against the devil. Devil tries to appeal to Petey, but Petey says he can't trust the devil, so he's going to destroy the devil with his own cane. So he uses the cane until the devil is weak, then picks him up and throws him off the roof, and spot and the devil spontaneously combusts. I love before all this with the people in the car how they make the lamest excuse for the car not being there. I need to go <laughs> home and get my makeup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I didn't know what they were going for there. I thought she was going to get something that would help Petey. Yeah, so, me too. But it was just yeah. a way to get them out of the, the picture for a bit. Yep. Uh, so then Petey then breaks the cane over his knee, then goes downstairs. He gets into a car that gets in, it's Jimmy's, but it's actually the Devil's, who is there with Skillet and Leroy, now a part of the Devil's army, and the daughter, who finally takes her veil off to reveal her grotesque face. And Petey screams in horror to a freeze, freeze frame ending. And that is the end of Petey Weechstraw. What a good movie. Yeah, a lot of fun. I, I again, I love the over-the-top acting. Yeah. In this, like the the final scene or the final shot is Petey screaming it directly into the camera. Yeah. And it, that happens a lot in this movie. Where, like when the demons break into the club, everyone just starts freaking out into the camera. It, mm-hmm. It's so self-aware that uh, it just it makes it that much more fun. Where in maybe in another movie it would be like, oh, that's that's no good. You shouldn't be screaming into the camera. But it, yeah. it fits here, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a good one. I uh, I think I like this better than Dolomite. I don't remember Dolomite well enough. Yeah, yeah, this one's a little more crazy from what I remember. Yeah, it's got that supernatural feel to it, you know. And yeah, the, yeah I don't I don't remember Dolomite a whole lot, but I'll definitely remember Petey Weedstraw. <laughs> I think so too. It'll be this will be a little bit more difficult to forget. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that is our episode on PD Weed Straw. We got a third segment coming up. Before we do, we're going to take a quick break. You guys are going to listen to some ads, and we'll be right back. And welcome back. Now it's time for our third segment. And this week, we are doing a fantasy draft. Football season is right around the corner. Personally, we are doing our fantasy draft this week. So, decide to do fantasy draft. And we are doing... I wanted to... I give the exact how I phrased it in the chat. And it was, I believe, fantasy draft depictions of the devil in media. So we have, I'm going to do our usual four, and we have a fantasy draft order already. It'll be me first, uh, followed by Dan, then Mark, and then Mark snake pick and we'll back around. And we'll do four. So for me, I am not going to play any games. I got to take the best one off the board. I got to go with Elizabeth Hurley in Be Dazzled. Oh, good one. I had her on my <laughs> list. Yeah. Yep. You know what? Uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Hurley doesn't get much better than that. So the fact that she's a devil is just icing. on. So yeah. peak Elizabeth Hurley. Peak Elizabeth Hurley. Hard to argue that. Couldn't keep Hugh Grant, though. That's that's bad. 
Yeah. Who could? <laughs> <laughs> he is so be- charmingly befuddled. Yeah. All right. Dan, who are you going with? Your first pick overall. All right. Give me the devil from South Park. Ooh, that's a good one. Who is married, who has an on again, off again relationship with Saddam Hussein. Mm-hmm. Not uh, very bad. timely. But it's just <laughs> one of my favorite things is still the uh, uh, Jen and I still quote this to this day is uh, his sweet 16 party with the, the Acura cake. Did you ever <laughs> see that? Episode? Yeah. He he wanted a Mustang cake, and they could only get an Acura cake. <laughs> Acura cake. <laughs> All right, Mark, who's your pick? Who's your your first pick? Yeah, so um, for my two picks, I'm going to go back to back from the same era of of movie, a little more a little more serious of a um uh tone than 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 the South Park Satan. Um, I'll pick my number one choice, which was um Al Pacino in The Devil's Advocate. Because if there's if there's one role that Al Pacino could play, it's a a, a crazed devil man, and he by the end of this movie goes full full Pacino, and it is one of my favorite performances of his. Um, you know, it's also you know before even really knowing about the movie, it went in because it was Keanu and stuff at the time. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, he just it was just so he played it so uh straight for a while and then it just built throughout the movie and i think it was a really good job um that was 1997 and then going back to i think it's a couple years later um i was uh looking at um gabriel byrne um in i believe it's the end of days the arnold schwarzenegger movie um where he basically um plays uh from what i remember the um the whole point of Arnold's character in that movie is, you know, stopping a woman from being impregnated with the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. And the the entire time, uh, Gabriel Burns just like in his ear around him and just sort of, you know, there. And it's a very it's a very uh, like menacing, more, you know, subdued and not cartoon version of it. But um, for a mediocre action movie, it's actually a, a, a pretty well done performance um, and very much fits in that time period of of thriller movies okay can't really argue with that i don't think i've actually ever seen end of days i assume he's doing a very similar al pacino yeah but it doesn't go full pacino it doesn't go full pacino all right dan who's your second pick all right i'm going with ned flanders from treehouse you would or <laughs> you are not smarter than the devil homer <laughs> it's, yeah it's it's always the ones you least expect um it's such a great, uh, great episode or a, 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 a great um, reveal where uh, ho- he turns Homer's head into the donut. They have the jury of the damned. Lionel Hutz is in that episode. Mm-hmm. It's it's a a classic. Uh, I I love that episode so much. Um, yeah. So Ned Flanders Treehouse of Horror Four. It's also got the Broad Street Bullies on there. Yeah, it does. yeah, they're the, a part of the jury of the damned. 1976 Philadelphia Flyers. <laughs> this is great. It's so good. Uh, <laughs> who is Nixon? Is like, I'm not dead. In fact, I just wrote a book. <laughs> Quiet. Yes, Master. <laughs> All right. Good picks. Uh, I also, for my next pick, I also want to go the animated route, and Ned Flanders was on my short list. But I'm going to go similarly. I'm going to go Futurama. I'm going to go the Robot Devil. Nice. Yeah, Robot Devil's good. That is a good one. <laughs> yeah, very underrated. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, it feels, um, you know, coming from that, that um, uh, I can't think of the word, that, that pedigree of, of comedy and characters and character creating. It's, um, it's good because it fits the, the narrative there where everything's so futuristic that even the devil is futuristic. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, he's great. The couple episodes, I think he was the the original series finale where he trades hands with fries. Great episode. It's a good he's one. Also in previous ones, too. Um, for my next pick, I'm going to go. I, I, I want to I want a varied team. So I'm going to go horror route. So I've got comedy. I've got animated. I'm going to go horror and I'm going to go with kind of the. The littlest shit when it comes to uh, the portrayals of the devil. And that little shit is none other than Black Phillip from The Witch. Oh, man. Yeah, I completely forgot about that one. Mm-hmm. Damn, that was on 
that was on my list for this round. Good yeah, <laughs> he's such a little shit because he just stares at you with those weird ass fucking goat eyes and just doesn't do anything. And those two little fucking twins are just need a good fucking slap in that movie. But, but and he and he like taunts the father. Yeah, the, the black like he gets on his hind legs and he's dancing around a little bit. He he knows what he's doing. Yeah. It's such a good reveal when it's like because that whole movie could end with there never being a devil or a real witch ever showing up, right? And then he just like reveals himself to be the actual devil. It's like, oh fuck you, this fuck this guy. <laughs> well, it, it's a good. Uh, it's better in my opinion that he was actually the devil because uh, you know they're obviously going after Anya Taylor Joy so hard. Mm-hmm. It's good to see that there was someone else pulling the strings, as it were. Yeah. All right, Dan, your third pick. All right. Uh, I'm going to stray away from animated here, and I'm going to go with Tim Curry in the movie Legend. Nice. Just the quintessential looking Satan, right? The big horns, the red skin. Just, you know, when you think of devil, this is what you think of. And uh, obviously Tim Curry giving his unique take on the character very uh tim curry-esque perfect mm-hmm. voice for it um yeah so th- I'm, I'm going with that that's kind of the first thing that pops into my mind when i th- when i think of what the devil would look like solid pick very solid all right mark your third and fourth yeah so i'll go um the uh third pick um someone who I don't know how he did not play the devil more often, or maybe he played him in movies, but not actually like named the devil. But um, uh, Jack Nicholson in uh, Witches of Eastwick. Um, it is just it is just a a guy that that sort of was born to play. Um, if you're uh, if you're going for you know that type of uh, of devil character, um, him just like. Um, Al Pacino um, can kind of bring that energy that you need to sort of slowly uh, transition from, you know, uh, uh, deceitful to maybe a little crazy. Um, and it's well done. Um, I haven't seen it in a while, but it is one of one of those one of those portrayals that stands out. And then my fourth pick, um, I tried looking up to find exactly the actress's name, but just the portrayal of it. Going back to our earlier conversation in the cold open um, about going to, you know, Catholic school and all that stuff. Um, I just really like the description, the um, depiction um, of Satan. Um, if you take out all the propaganda and stuff um, from The Last Temptation of Christ, um, the William Defoe movie, which, by the way, William Defoe playing the wrong character in that movie. Sure. Um, he's very much a guy that should have played the devil. Uh, but I love the depiction in that movie of that the during the temptation period the 40 days in the desert if i remember my theology correct um the devil comes to him as a little girl uh posing to be his guardian angel like sort of helping him on his journey but is actually uh, just the devil in disguise and it goes to the black philip thing um who would have been my pick here um if i didn't but just that just that subversion of what the devil looks like um you know, even though a goat is more closely representative than than a little girl, but just that it's not just a um, a male figure and, and all that it was is one of the one of my one of my um, you know favorite ideas for um, you know this kind of character. Even though the the film leans a little too much into into the um, you know maybe some I use the word propaganda you know stuff for um, the depictions of everything um, around the story of Christ. So. Yeah, those are my choices. All right, good choices. Uh, Willem Dafoe actually played the devil in a Mercedes-Benz commercial that I helped work on. Oh, no way. Well, there you go. That's cool. Yeah. Dan, what about you? Fourth and final pick for you. So now I, I don't know if this counts because he's not, I don't know if he's counted as the devil, but he is a version of the underworld where like the dead go. So I, I picked Hades from Hercules. You get James Woods out of his podcast. <laughs> yeah, the James Woods one. Uh, I don't, again, I don't know if that counts. And if it doesn't, I have a backup. Who's your backup? Uh, Dave Grohl from Pick of Destiny. Let's go with Dave Grohl. 
Okay, yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll would, go with that. Yeah. That and that's more of just a um, hail mary. I, I was sure. running out of uh, running out of devils. I was like, I, I guess he counts. Sure. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, 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 that's why I originally asked about four or five before mm-hmm. we started recording because I had only five on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It it's kind of slim pickings with yeah. some a creature that's been around for thousands of years, but really good portrayals of the devil or, or not, not really plentiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for my fourth pick, before we get to that, I'll, uh, I'll do my short list of what is left before I picked, explain the one that I picked um, the devil from the Bible. Technically <laughs> based okay, on what it, I, it, is, it is media. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's in a, it is a work of fiction. Um, I have Sheriff Cooley from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Okay. I have the fiddle playing devil from the Charlie Daniels band song. Devil went down to Georgia. Sure, sure. I have him from Powerpuff Girls, which I almost picked, but I already have the robot devil, so I'm not going to. Well, I guess I am already picking an animated one, but him was behind the one I'm picking on my list. And I had Ray Wise from the show Reaper, the short lived TV show which I thought was an underrated show. But I am going, my pick is The Devil from Night on Bald Mountain from Fantasia. Good one. Oh, yeah. yeah. That scared me as a kid. Mm-hmm. It's kind of got that Tim Curry design to it. Yeah, it does. Big hulking horned devil. Just, just ripped, absolutely shredded, that devil. Yeah, like, hear me, hear me out level ripped right like I, I could fix him yeah like if i i don't want to fuck the devil but if i had to <laughs> he's the one <laughs> yeah sure he's getting I mean, he's, he's, he's given <laughs> he, he owns land he's he, a he, landowner, he's, a landowner. <laughs> <laughs> he's giving daddy vibes he sure is <laughs> Uh, it's it wouldn't be a they called this a movie <laughs> podcast if we didn't just like take a weird left turn into Hornyville right just right at the end and not even for Elizabeth Hurley <laughs> right, we, we respectfully talk board. about that yeah. <laughs> she, yeah she she deserves it she deserves yeah. it yeah but yeah that's at least pretty good yeah. pretty good team I like it all around um, and that is going to wrap us up this week tell us tell us who. Who has the best team of devils? Oh, we could have picked Scott Stevens. Oh, I was just thinking like <laughs> I should have picked the New Jersey Devils. I didn't want to. I didn't. Uh, I didn't, I didn't want to get all sports political on you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, and what a missed opportunity by some of us here. Yeah, Martin Brodeur, or Scott Stevens would have been a very good picks. Yep. Damn. <laughs> or Scott Niedermeyer. Um, but that's going to be our episode. Uh, check us out on all of our socials, TikTam Pod on Instagram, at Twitter, X formerly known as Twitter, as some people call it. It's still fun, Twitter. Mm-hmm. But it's also a hellhole and a piece of shit now. Uh, they call this a movie on TikTok. We're also at TikTampod at gmail.com at Gmail. So hit us up. Give us your top four devils in media um, on that. Yeah. And go check out our YouTube. Uh, just look for They Called Us a Movie. We should be over there. And I think, I think that is it. The director of P.D. Wheatstraw was Cliff Roquemore. So for Dan Aquino and Mark Myers, this is the Anthony that I keep telling Cliff Roquemore well. You certainly the main movie, didn't you? Thanks for listening to They Called Us a Movie. Subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at TikTampod. That's T-C-T-A-M-Pod. You can also check us out on TikTok at They Called Us a Movie.